fertility and fecundity. And the fecundity is the factors which are which are most affected there. There is econo econ uh, economical factors, social factors, and literacy as well as cultural factors. These are the factors which affect the fecundity part. It's a simple standard question which you can answer. So we'll proceed to the second question. Two weeks. Where you can discuss it. Uh, sorry. Describe Mandel's law of inheritance. Discuss the recent advancement in human genetics. So Mandel has got on four postulates. Which, uh, through which he tries to explain the inheritance part. Hmm. The first is law of unit character. Hmm. Law of unit character. That means he tries to say like uh, for example for a character for tallness okay, there is a there is something he doesn't call them as a gene there is something which is which will influence tallness that, that is what he says law of unit character which we uh, ascribe it as DD. dominance and recessiveness next. So for every character, there is something called D and D, which could influence that character. But when uh, this uh, character or uh, this unit traits are present in the form of D and D, we call it as a dominant one. So the same thing is also called as dominant when both are in the uh, lower form, recessive. It's called recessive. So it tries to explain these two things. Next, law of segregation of gametes. During gamete formation, each of the strands will establish independently. This is the first law. Law of segregation of gametes. Then law of independent assortment. Because in this what happens independently they will combine with the other gametes. Is what is this the second law? Law of independent assortment. So these are the Mendel's law of inheritance. Recent advancement in human genetics, you can write it. There is nothing in the standard about it. is genetic counseling. I will briefly discuss the various steps involved in it. First is uh, we need to describe genetic counseling, what it is. So it is a process where you, need, you are trying to analyze the risk of genetic disorders from the couple. Okay. So, <coughs> so what you will do is you will uh, try to examine the risk factor and also create uh, give awareness among uh, to the couple regarding the uh, genetic disorders that is genetic counseling then next thing is process or steps involved in genetic counseling there are four steps which 
are involved in genetic counseling first thing is diagnosis and then what you will do is you will try to study the uh, history of the uh, couples like from the both male side and from the female side what are the genetic diseases which uh, uh, they will draw the pedigree, pedigree chart the family trees and everything whatever who all had the diseases they will try to examine it in that way so pedigree analysis would be carried out the first step is diagnosis second step is determination of mode of interest determination of mode of inheritance yes and the same the in the same pedigree tree you, you, we can easily find out whether the inheritance is dominant one or the recessive one who is uh, who is carrying or not so what is the mode of inheritance whether dominant or the recessive one <coughs> and uh, this So determination mode of inheritance and assessment they do the assessment also about the possibility of getting the genetic disease so for example in, in this case you can, you can draw any example okay? in this case if they do uh, if they do uh, assessment how do they do it they will do this B D A B D. Okay, and if uh, the disease is recessive one, then there is only twenty five percent chances. This assessment they will do. There is only twenty five percent chances of getting that disease. This is the second stage in genetic counseling. Third stage is transmission of information. So, how to, uh, in this case, they will try to uh, I mean, examine like the uh, psychological condition of the couple, and in a very calm environment, uh, they will try to explain the things very carefully that this is the condition. And if you want, if you uh, want to take chance, you can do it. Otherwise, uh, I mean, no, you, you should not do. So that is how they will transfer the information. And fourth is management of the disease. So this can be done in the prenatal stage also, if it is possible. But what happens, all these are the genetic level products, all these protein synthesis, they are, these are the ones which are causing pro problems. And uh, medical advancement is not so high to go directly touch the gene level and correct it. Uh, that uh, UG, eugenics are all uh, upcoming fields, that's it. There is no very good advancement in it to cure, the, to cure the disease so that the baby born will be healthy. So it is very difficult, but still, with whatever possible, they will try to do it in the management of the disease. This are the four steps involved. The role of anthropology in understanding health and disease. <coughs> we already talked about uh, this health and disease. What uh, uh, things? Infectious and non-infectious disease. In the previous uh, question itself. That covers most of the things in the epidemiology, epidemiology, epidemiology. So, uh, this, since it is a 20 mark question, you just have to talk more on it. That's it. Like infectious disease, we, talk, we talked about uh, with, uh, like bacteria, fungi. You should talk more on the bacterial disease, like cholera, tuberculosis, pneumonia. So these are bacterial bone diseases. Just draw a chart which bacteria is causing, and then what is the uh, uh, symptoms. 
because they are calling infectious and non infectious one understanding. So, this is the bacteria which is causing this particular disease. These are the symptoms. <coughs> 20 marker question. Huh? Similarly, virus, you can quote rabies, polio, HIV. Similarly, protozoan, you can quote malaria, sleeping sickness. Then, in the non infectious side, nutritious. Nutritious ones, uh, we talked about obesity, that, that part, no? uh, stunted growth, everything that you can quote. Apart from that, you have occupational uh, diseases like stress, strain, those things are all. That is also a kind of a disease which is occupational related. So, occupational related diseases. And then lifestyle, lifestyle also we spoke. Now this is, in the non-infectious we forgot to mention, like the, this vitamin A, B, C, D disease, this also you can quote, this is non-infectious, seraphthalmia in case of vitamin A uh, deficiency, very very in case of vitamin B deficiency, scurvy in, in case of vitamin C. D for the 20 marks you can write down. So, define growth and development. Briefly describe, uh, describe briefly the different methods of studying human growth. We define human growth and development in the previous question. So, different methods of studying human growth, there are three methods. One is longitudinal growth study. In this, <coughs> same people are studied over a long period of time. Say so from uh, the age of five, if uh, a baby, uh, they are trying to study on that baby, and then 90 years, what is this impact? They will carry on the study for the 90 years, 85 years long. Same people, uh, same group of people is uh, studied for a long period of time. In this, there is two types. One is uh, growth velocity, other one. Uh, Linear distance growth. Another one is growth velocity. This is just an example which is quoted in Sinna's book. It tries to draw a diagram on floor, uh, sorry, on uh, representation. In which case, since the same individual is uh, studied for a long period of time, their growth, growth, growth will be like this. Like at the age of uh, 5, the child will be of this age. At the age of 21, you would have reached the maturation. After that, doesn't matter, it will saturate. So, one, one uh, this one uh, representation is there in Tina. Similarly, growth velocity is like at different phase. Like <coughs> Uh, uh, it will be something like this. The graph will be something like this because at the age of 10, we have something adult called adolescent growth spurt. At that time, uh, her height will suddenly increase. Till uh, from the baby till this point of time, they will be like you know, it's almost declining. As a, because at the very early phases of life, uh, we will grow more. Child will be like uh, six or uh, three months, fine. three months, six months, nine months. The growth will be very rapid. After that, uh, almost reduces. After, uh, then uh, during this ten years time, adolescent growth spurt it will increase lot. After that also growth reduces. This is growth velocity curve. So sim simple example like this. These are gra uh, different graphs. So given uh, as an example in uh, P math, quote it, quote it, and good, get good marks. Do it. That is all about longitudinal growth. Other one is cross sectional growth study.
in this <coughs> instead of selling same people over a long period of time little group of people 10 years one group 20 years one group 30 years one group 40 years one group different group of people at different pertaining to different age groups are studied at the same point of time in this cross sectional growth study the other one is semi longitudinal growth study It's a mix of both longitudinal as well as uh, cross sectional growth study. <coughs> for some characters, they do it uh, longitudinal, for some characters, they do uh, cross sectional growth study. And there is one formula for that. So, growth, uh, growth rate is equal to B minus A by B into C. This is growth at point A, growth at point B. This is the interval between uh, A and B. This formula also you got. Whether you understand or not, you won't mark that. Right? <coughs> You'll get it. Next question Defining equipment for force is applied. It's an applied component of physical anthropology. Discuss a suitable example. So, this is uh, most this anthropometry question. Define what anthropometry. What is it? It's a measurement of human. Uh, and uh, based on this uh, requirement, uh, objects are prepared. Okay. After that, its application in sports. We have two case studies which is given in PNR, where uh, Sachindra Sinha, where uh, you know the same hockey sticks for seniors as well as juniors. There is a, a deficiency. Like uh, the, what uh, the seniors use, juniors may not be using it effectively. So. <laughs> what he has redesigned uh, the, these equipments so that it suits the juniors better. So this example you can quote. And in one, in uh, the other thing is there is a in Chotanagpur there is a tribe called uh, Saurya Saurya Paharia tribe. They are uh, good at archery, but uh, normally these tribes are all like the other stunted ones. Like 150 centimeters, 160 centimeters. They are not of uh, our height. So uh, this archery uh, international standard designs, it, it is a kind of a drawback for them to use them. So same such in has uh, redesigned his equipments so that uh, he is uh, better able to effectively use it. And uh, all these kind of redesign using anthropology and uh, the racial characters. Have grown to be effective. Okay. Apart from this, also collect more case studies. These are like everybody will write, but we collect some more case studies. Use websites like The Wire, The Better India, ECW. You get so many examples. And if you quote the most uh, the recent ones and uh, something different, you will get, you can uh, fetch more marks. At least some difference you can make. It's a simple question there. Uh, uh, got it 3D. So, as a different stresses at higher altitude, how do better cardiovascular functions help the native island in combating the low environment ecosystem? Since it's a 15 marker, but normally it's a 20 marker question. And they'll not only club this as higher altitude, they'll club all three or sometimes two. Cold, hot desert, and high altitude. These are the three things which are in the syllabus. They will at least ask two and put for 20 markers easily. That entire chapter you have to write it in four pages. <laughs> it will be like that. So there is something called as human adjustments. You just quote this diagram everywhere, like whether it's hot, cold, or anything.
so you, uh, anything uh, we, we have to adjust human adjustment that is two type one is biological the other one is cultural adjustment in biological you have two things that is acclimatization the other one is <coughs> adaptation i also say what is acclimatization what is adaptation this will be your introduction part okay this the more this the temporary one the adaptation is the more uh, i mean uh, uh, the long term ones those are the people who actually uh, stay over there that they will have to adapt to that environment conditions okay next uh, the, uh, at higher altitude what is the acclimatization and at higher altitude what is the adaptation the biological part if you uh, if, uh, if you if they are asking for the cultural part also you can write dressing housing style so all these things will come under the cultural part but acclimatization and adaptation at higher altitude you as a biological answer you will be just writing like a uh, for acclimatization there is a increased lung surface area and tissue blood supply increases breathing rate increases first you should also give the condition at higher altitude there is a lower pressure and also oxygen is very less under this condition this is the acclimatization increased lung surface area tissue blood supply increases and uh, uh, breathing rate and also the oxygen is uh, oxygen curve shifts to the right see na the uh, book has got the diagram you put some three graphs there no that you have to put and then adaptation part the baby size will be less so smaller baby is the born body mass body to surface surface area will be more that has to be decreased so the body mass will be less heart rate heart rate so this cardiovascular system the right side of the heart will be more so that from the right side of the heart it will pump the blood to the lung so more blood is pumped to the lung so that more blood will get oxygenated at one uh, one instant itself that is the uh, cardiovascular arrangement it will happen it is happening at the higher altitude that's it mom that that's it then we have talked about acclimatization adaptation we can talk about cultural uh, adjustments also next is personal identification this is the forensic anthropology part which is uh, the main objective is to identify the persons so and uh, uh, what circumstances that, that leads to this kind of personal identification is one is to solve any criminal disputes so first way uh, forensic anthropology that definition and all that would be your introduction part then why this personal identification is necessary to solve criminal disputes or to solve disputed parenty Then uh, sometimes in hospital baby swap will happen. You want to uh, know uh, whose baby it is? That is uh, that is there. Then it's for uh, to identify the dead bodies in accident sites. Identify dead bodies and all. So that also personal identification is required. So when how to next is how how to do the personal identification. so there is two parts one if uh, the person is alive other when the person is dead when the person is alive you can do morphological analysis then all this uh, uh, serogen uh, biochemical analysis then the uh, fingerprints 
DNA fingerprint, so many things you can do. So when, uh, when the person is dead, you can just try to reconstruct uh, and examine. This is also leading to morphological analysis. Then whatever from the, mat the, the uh, materials available, you can do like, uh, I will be sometimes. 